Welcome to a fantastic edition of Rebellion's Educational Series. Today we're here with a brilliant engineering mind, my friend Hemeng Dave, who's going to talk about the Eximer laser, which has had a profound effect on our society, and I'm excited to learn. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. Alex, uh, it's always great to be with you, uh, and, and you just stated makes really truly is the right thing to say. Eximer laser has made a profound impact on humanity. So let's just take a little bit of a step back, you know, when we start talking about lasers. So initially, humanity started using lasers for various other purposes, but one of the most important and most prominent use for laser was uh, cutting alloys. But those lasers were pretty hot in nature, right? You know, so usually, you know, they heat things up and things along that line. And in 1950s and 1960s and onwards, um, humanity started thinking, especially the the computer makers who wanted to create smaller and smaller chip designs and they started figuring out that you know if we can use lasers to um, do the chips manufacturing and fabrication it would be awesome because then we can shrink the size of chips uh, so as part of that experiment uh, at ibm when i used to work at ibm one of my fellow uh, colleagues and a great friend and brilliant brilliant mind dr jim win and his team started working on figuring out if we can use lasers to do the chip design. And then came the invention of Axamer laser. So initial purpose for it to be was to, you know, creating of uh, chips. But as you know, brilliant minds don't always stick with one thing. Their minds wander. They always, they are innately curious about getting things through and doing other things, not just one thing. And as part of their experimentation, um, and this is a really personal and a funny story, um, Dr. Jim Wynn and two of his fellow scientists at uh, IBM uh, Research in uh, uh, Yorktown Heights, IBM Watson Research, uh, this was somewhere in mid 1980s, three of these guys came to work on Black Friday, the one after you know Thanksgiving, and um, one of the, uh, the, the scientists had brought uh, leftover turkey leg for lunch. And while they were experimenting and they said, you know, see if we can, you know, figure out that if this laser would um, go and hit up a turkey leg. Uh, and this, these people were just kind of, you know, playing around and experimenting just like any other person would do. And to their surprise, when they aimed laser at turkey leg, they were able to create very, very, very fine incisions into the cartilage of that uh, turkey leg without destroying surrounding tissues or cells and other things. And they were just very surprised by that, that you know, this laser frequency could do that kind of incision into the, the tissue and not really destroy it. Because in the past, when you looked at all these lasers, if you did that kind of things, it will just pretty much destroy all the surrounding tissues and things. So this was a great reveal for them. And they were so like, that, wow. that opened the avenue of LASIK surgery? That act, act, so there is a little bit to this, that story. And so the answer is yes. Uh, so just after that um, initial discovery, they did a couple other things. And they said, you know, let's just use a human air, hair. And if we can carve something out, and they were able to carve out letter IBMs on a human hair using that laser. So it, give, it shows you the, the, the precision that laser was bringing. But then about two or three weeks after them doing these things, they were at a conference and by chance, they ran into a few ophthalmologists and they were telling them that, you know, we were able to do these kind of things on a turkey leg. Sure, there is applications for some level of you know human experimentation and obviously this being eye doctors they said you know this would really help us reshape cornea and other things within human eye and thus came the invention of lasik surgery obviously it had to go through a lot of fda trials a lot of other things experimentations and things both from ibm side but also from industry at large and then they were eventually able to come up with, you know, reshaping of cornea and various other things, which is a main and important crucial things about doing LASIK surgery. That's, uh, that's super cool. Uh, so how hot does the actual laser get? So usually this, this laser does not get hot at all, right? You know, so that's one of the, the beautiful thing about that. Because remember, when they were initially trying to do this thing for 
fabrication of chips, right? Because they wanted to use the, the precision. But what happens is when you try to use hot lasers on, on a silicon wafer, it will turn that into glass, right? Because if it's too hot, then you know the silicon will turn into glass and it will render itself useless. So that's why this reason was for us to you know go in and keep this laser not hot at all. So this laser frequency is not hot, but it still provides incredible amount of precision for doing surgeries or even chip designs. And in many cases, even in today's world, lasers are used for this level of manufacturing in the industrial usage as well. That's uh, uh, super cool. Uh, well, uh, uh, this was a, a really fun uh, exploration today. And uh, I look forward to our next episode where we'll discuss uh, another learning topic uh, with Hemang in the future. Uh, have a wonderful uh, day and we'll talk soon. Okay, thank you, Alex. Wonderful, bye-bye.